Today, we will be looking at the Supernatural 1967 Chevy Impala Sports Sedan by AMT. And now, without further ado, let's go down and see what's in the box. <laughs> Supernatural, join the hunt with AMT's 1967 Chevy Impala Sports Sedan. This is a 125th scale plastic model kit intended for ages 10 and up. When Sam and Dean Winchester decide to follow their father's example, they make saving people and hunting things a family business. The things they hunt go bump in the night. Their inherited muscle car, a four-door 67 Impala named Baby, is their most important asset in the fight against evil. Featuring opening hood with detailed big block engine, spotlights and bumper guards, all new four-door body and interior door panels, custom wheels. This model kit is a retooled version of AMT Ertl's 1967 Chevrolet Impala Supersport, which came out in 1997. We begin our adventure by delving deep into the instruction sheet. Step 1. The Engine Assembly here we have our engine block going together, and we have both right and left hand sides with the transmission molded in place. We also have the holes for the cylinders, and up here we have our cylinder heads, which also show the rocker arms up here for our valves. There we've got our intake manifold with the coil molded in place. We also have our water pump and front timing chain cover, and the oil pan which glues up from the bottom. Step B shows our distributor being installed beside the coil, the carburetor being glued onto the top of the intake manifold, the alternator with the bracket being glued on the side of the water pump, as well as the belts and pulleys which attach into these holes, and the one here on the alternator. We also have the starter motor being glued to the side of the engine block. Step C completes our engine with our valve covers getting glued in place on the cylinder heads, the exhaust manifolds also being glued to the lower side of the cylinder heads, our fan going into the top pulley, our air cleaner going into the carburetor, and the decal being installed on top of the air cleaner. Step 2. Chassis Assembly Our chassis assembly starts with step A, where we see our perimeter frame here. We glue on the upper A arms, and then we turn the whole assembly over, and what we have here is our front anti-sway bar. We also have our coil springs, our steering knuckles here, as well as the lower A arms and our tie rod, and all these parts get glued in place following the dots and arrows. Panel B shows our differential here with the cover being glued onto the back. Then as we go down here, we install our coil springs in the back, and then our control arms, and our little ends here onto the differential itself, shock absorbers, and the rear anti-sway bar. All of this attached down onto the back end of the frame. Panel C shows our floor pan being installed on top of the completed frame. Step 3. Dash paint and decals. Here in panel 3 we have a decal guide for our dashboard. Here you can see the gauges being installed as well as some of the wood trim which would go up into here. We also have the Impala decal going on the top of the dashboard and it says to paint all knobs silver and we also have our pedals being painted down below. Step 4. Interior Assembly Here we have our interior being glued together. What we have is two separate side panels which would go down onto the floorboards as well as the rear bench seat and the front bench seat which is molded in two pieces and goes together. There is an emblem right here which goes into the center of that rear seat. We also have our steering wheel and our shift column and the lever, and that goes onto the dashboard. And there is also a clear panel which covers up those gauges. Step five, body assembly. Here we have the body assembly, and what we're looking at is the body itself. The rear window gets glued in the back, the front window gets glued up in the front. There are some location holes, as well as our rear view mirror, which gets glued in place. We have the firewall here, and the front steering column, as well as the brake booster, which gets applied right in here. In step B, we add the body to the chassis and frame. Then we drop in our engine, install the lower and upper radiator hoses to the radiator shroud. And down here, there is a note 
Smint fan shroud to radiator before attaching to assembled chassis. Step 5. Body assembly continued. We continue on with our body assembly by putting in the rear taillights into the bumper. Here we have our choice of which license plate decal we want to install, as well as the Chevrolet emblem, which gets attached up here. We also have our paint callout for the rear taillights, as well as the backup lights. Up front, we have the front grille, again with your choice of license plate and different decals which go in place. We have our clear headlights being glued into the headlight bezels and the front bumper gets glued up here onto the front of the fenders. We also have our windshield wiper bottle and the heater hoses. Step six, exhaust system assembly. Here we see the undercarriage of the car. We have our drive shaft which connects the back end of the transmission to the differential. Here we have our mufflers and exhaust pipes. We've got the ones that go up front. These have to be attached to the exhaust manifolds. And then in the back, we have the rear tailpipes with the rear mufflers, which get glued into the front mufflers. All this goes down onto that frame. Step seven, tire wheel assembly. Here we have our tire and wheel assembly. And what we have is the same size of wheels. These are the mags for going up in the front and in the back. They go through the tires and then there is a backing plate and the actual rear of the wheels. What you want to do is not glue right into here because that would lock these in place. Step eight, final assembly. Here we have the final assembly in step eight. What we have is the hood. Now do not cement the hood, otherwise you won't be able to open it and see the engine. We also have this nice piece of chrome which glues up underneath the hood as part of the trim for the front grille. Here we can see our wheels being installed onto the little points on the ends of each of the axles. Panel B finishes off the model with our spotlights, and these are done in three pieces. We have the bracket, the spotlight housing, and the clear lens. All of these would glue together, and then once you have two sets of those, you assemble and drop the spotlights onto the pillars in the front here for our roof. We also have the rear view mirror, one on each side being glued in place, and the windshield wipers which go into these holes on the cowl. Round two finishes off their instruction sheet with a full paint color callout and the symbols identifying each of the colors as you go through the instructions, a guide to the exterior colors and the interior colors. And now let's look at Baby herself. So what we have here is this amazing body which is modified from the original Impala that came out in 97 for a new roof line as well as four doors. The GM door handles look really excellent in here. We also have the inner fender aprons and the radiator support brace as well as where the hood clicks in. Now, one thing about this, if you're having issues with the hood fitting, it says in the instructions just to sand this area right here down until the hood fits in nicely. We have the great detail of the cowl vent right there, as well as up in the back, you can even see the latch for the trunk lid. Again, a really amazing looking model. We also have this belt line molding in here and the molding around the wheel arches. So one thing I'm gonna bring into frame right now is the original Impala kit. And you can see quite a difference. First off, this is molded in black plastic. This one is molded in light gray. But if we take both on the side, you can see the difference in the roof panel. Let's just shadow this up a little bit. So there is the difference in the roof panel as well as the four doors. But lengthwise, if we take these and compare them, they are in fact the same length of car. So that I found to be really interesting. One thing you can do if you don't want to build this as a supernatural, maybe as some other ideas, is to get a kit like one of the police cars and make Baby into a police car with the four doors. Our next component to Baby is the floor pans. Unfortunately, there is a mold mark right here just in front of the rubber mat which is going to be interesting to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade. Overall though, this has the same amount of quality as the original 1997 kit. 
if we turn baby over, you can see the gigantic gas tank back in here, which would be painted nicely with some testers steel paint. We also have all the different floor pan details. Again, really excellent looking stuff, really beautiful. There are some spots where we're gonna have to sand down where it was attached to the parts tree, but overall this should be quite simple. Here we have the frame for baby and again this is really wonderful because it's the exact same frame as in the 1997 release. Again really excellently done just needs to be smoothed up in here and up in here. Get rid of the mold marks. You will have to scrape the seam off of around the frame. It's on the outside as well as the inside but once you do that this will look quite incredible. Here are the pieces that make up the underhood areas of the car, as well as the dashboard and the engine. Baby is powered by a Chevrolet 427 cubic inch big block, and what we have here is the engine itself, as well as the transmission, which is a beautiful manual transmission. Here we have the cylinder heads with those rockers molded in place, as well as our exhaust manifolds, front timing chain cover, the upper and lower radiator hoses, starter motor, the oil pan with the oil filter. We also have the belts and pulleys and the alternator here. I do believe this is the battery. We have the brake booster, the fan, the fan shroud, as well as the dash or the insert, the firewall and our dashboard. Wow, making some mistakes here in a video. All right, take a look at the dashboard. Again, quite a wonderful looking component. The radiator and shroud is really excellent as well, as is the engine block. There's the rockers molded in place again, and all the wonderful details of that firewall, looking really very much like the real, real Impala itself. Again, wonderful work by AMT. A couple of mold marks in the back you're going to have to take care of, but overall, excellent work. This parts tree contains more of our engine and suspension components. Here we have our distributor. I think maybe this is a battery, not too sure. But we have our rear coil springs as well as our valve covers, the steering wheel, the air cleaner, intake manifold, heater hoses, and then the suspension components like our rear arms for our axles. There's the front spindles for the steering and our rear mufflers at the beginning actually the tailpipes and mufflers so again really excellent work the black plastic is nice makes it easy for beginners to paint also allows us older builders to skip a few painting steps like on the frame and the interior but overall again really excellent work this parts tree contains our rear differential and axle as well as a differential rear cover plate here we have our drive shaft and here we have the beginning of our exhaust pipes with the ones going to the exhaust manifolds and then going into our mufflers here at the back. So again, take a look at the wonderful detail work of this. All the parts should fit into these grooves and holes. Again, really excellent stuff. Harkens right back to the original 1997 kit. Again, holding up and looking good in our modern age. Here we have our wheel backs, which again look really awesome. There is some detailing in here, which we'll take a look at in the middle. And these are the wheel back inserts, which go into these holes and allow the wheels to turn. Now let's take a look at these drums in the back. Again, really excellent work. There we go, if we catch the light, you can see all this detail in behind, which looks like the real thing. The only sad part is this is not really supposed to rotate around on the real car. But with the way this is set up with these little stoppers, that's exactly what happens. What should be going on is that the outer rim should rotate around with this being separate. But that is a really complicated way to do things. Ravel did that way back in the past, and it was a nightmare to try to get your wheels to operate. Overall, though, this is really excellent. Here we have the inner door panels, and this has totally been retooled from the original sports coupe door panels to include the extra strong brace in here because this sport roof doesn't actually have the rear pillars up into the windows. So all the support has to be here to hold the hinges for these big heavy doors in the back, as well as to provide rigidity so that the frame doesn't twist as you're going down the road. So again, this is really excellent. The individual door handles are just perfect on here. 
This makes it look like the real GM door handle, which I have here. This is the window crank as well. So again, you can see just what great detail you get into these side panels. These are also wheel retainers in here, but they really don't serve much of a purpose. So uh, let's just take a look at the upholstery pattern here. Again, really excellent work. Perfect by AMT and a good addition to the four-door body style. Here we have two parts trees. Really one is just a very small simple one and that is for the rear bench seat. Here we have the hood as well as the front bench seat and the seat back. Now unfortunately it looks like our parts tree is rather twisted here so hopefully that doesn't reflect anywhere in the parts that it contains. So first we'll take a look at the rear seat. Again you can see the nice upholstery pattern and there is a sunken detail right in the center here and that is for the chrome speaker that goes in between there or the chrome detail if it's not a speaker. Here we have our rear bench seat again that upholstery pattern is continued on. This would look good as a police car seat actually and in the back you can see the sunken in frame area that's so that the seat back doesn't actually sink in here. Underneath the hood you can see the nice detailing in here not much of mold, actually no mold marks underneath, which is a welcome addition to any model, of course. And then the top of the hood, again, looks really nice. So these pieces are excellent for the kit and should look good once you paint them up. This parts tree includes more suspension components. We have the coil springs, the front A-arms, the lower A-arms, as well as our tie rod and the rear brace and another radius rod up front and then the little supports for the rear axle. Here we have our parts tree, which consists of the front bumper and our headlight bezels, as well as the supports for our spotlights and the wheels. So let's bring this up to the camera and take a look. Again, the grill is a nicely detailed piece. It includes the Chevrolet Impala logo up there. The spotlights look wonderful. Turn them over, you can see where the glass goes in. And we also have the wheels here which are basically early 90s style wheels. Again, really quite cool and really excellent looking. Our second parts tree is lifted right out of the 67 Impala kit with a few modifications. So here we have our rear bumper and you can see it is molded all the way through here in the back. We have our backup lights, which are really awesome. We also have our windshield wipers and the little emblem that goes in the back of the middle of the bench seat. There's the chrome for under the hood. We also have our side mirrors. And this is the original console for the floor that goes in, but it's not gonna work without the bucket seats which came in the original kit. That's why the shift lever is now located to the steering column. So take a look at that rear bumper. Again, excellent work by AMT. And in the back we have three mold marks which you can remove again in order to make that look good. Paint it flat black in here so when you flip the car over there's no chance of seeing massive amounts of chrome underneath. Again we've got that nice center brace here, or trim actually, and then the windshield wipers and that little grill. Overall excellent parts just as it was in 1997. Here we have the clear components for our 1967 Chevrolet Impala sports sedan. What was really nice about these in the original kit is that they're all countersunk so that the glass will fit flushly in those window frames. We also have the four headlights. Remember to make that mesh go north and south, east and west, and not at some weird angle. Here we have the cover for the instrument panel, as well as clear lenses for those spotlights, and our rear taillights molded in transparent red. So let's just bring this up to the camera a little bit. You can see the sunken in detail, the recessing in here, as well as all the holes for mounting up underneath the body. Again, looks really great. Look at those headlights in there with that nice pattern. You love them, I love them, everybody loves them. Better than the molded in chrome ones, although I don't mind those myself actually. There are some mold marks up underneath in here, which again you can sand out so that this fits the interior better on that back package shelf. Again, really excellent work. And looking at the red lenses, we do have some detail inside there. And those are also countersunk so that they'll fit flushly with the rear bumper openings. One thing I find really interesting here is that AMT has put two tires in two separate bags. But I guess stranger things have happened before. 
Now the actual reason why they put them in two separate bags is because there is a smaller set of tires for the front and the bigger ones in the rear. Sadly there is no side markings like Goodyear or Firestone so that we know what these tires really are. But it does look like the tread pattern has been improved on them. There's the wide one in the back and the narrow one in front. And you can see a bit of a size difference here if we bring them up that way. The rear tire is a little bit wider in the back. Again though, the tread looks more realistic in this size as opposed to some of the earlier tires AMT did use in this kit, like the original Firestones. So again, nice and smooth on the sides, not too much going on, but will look more or less accurate underneath your car. For a little comparison between tires then and now, this is the Firestone Super Sport tire that came in the original kit in 1997, and these are the new ones that come in baby. So if we take a look here, you can see all the lettering on that tire. There's also a groove in here where you can add in a red wall or a white wall, depending on what kind of paint you wanted inside there. Now taking a look at the tread pattern, you can see the wavy lines that go all the way down it. That's the way a bias tire looked back in the day, even a bias belted tire. And then you take a look at the tread on baby. You can see it's a lot tighter in here which is a little more to scale as what a real tire tread would look like now as composed to the or compared to the wide type of tread here but what I really miss is actually the lettering on the sides of the tires they don't have them on the new ones for whatever reason probably because of copyright Finally, we have our decal sheet with the license plate from Kansas, as well as one from Ohio. There's our instrument panel. These, I do believe, are actually supposed to be aluminum. Those are for our dashboard. I thought they were going to be wood. Mostly <laughs> cars of the 60s and early 70s had wood in there. But what we have here is the Chevrolet logo, as well as the 427 for the air cleaner. And we've got our pentagram and other weird, mysterious symbols as well as the front turn signal lights and this little tiny impella circle here. So again, a really nice, very simplistic decal sheet for the model kit. I hope you enjoyed this look at AMT's 1967 Chevy Impella Sports Sedan from Supernatural, and that you too will join the hunt as you check out the model kits available to you at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, everyone, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>